the writer cites an event in Genesis chapter 22 to substantiate his claim. You remember in Genesis 22 on Mount Moriah, the Bible says that Abraham takes his son at the request or rather at the command of, of God to sacrifice him unto the Lord. The Lord says to him at that place, I swear I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to multiply you. I'm taking an oath and I'm making a promise to bless you right there. Now, I had some problems with understanding this text, Dr. James, and I need you to help me after church because I know you can. The issue is God made a promise and then takes a very human approach to solidifying it. God does something strange. He swore. Now, now, now before you shout, before you shout, he swore. The problem with him swearing is he doesn't need to. Because you and I swear, when I was young, I would get popped in my mouth for swearing. Mom said, don't you say that, boy. I, I, I swear I didn't do it. I swear I wasn't there. I swear I didn't go. You talking about you swear because we are taught that to swear is to authenticate, is to validate it. It is to, uh, uh, it is to, to bring validity to what I have said. So when I say I swear, you know, folk, want, when they want to prove to you that they mean what they say or that they're not lying, I swear on my mama's grave. I swear on my, I swear on my daddy. <laughs> but why would God swear? Because the nature of swearing is to bind yourself to a greater authority than you. My problem with this is him swearing who is greater than him? How could he swear? Why would he swear? He swore because you, he knew that you and I, when we hear the word I swear, we would believe him on another level. 